Rotten Rebel is a reviewer I think is severely underrated. He has great presentation, great personality, and a great production value in his videos. Hopefully me reacting to this video of his today, 10 out of 10 men's fragrances, 12 perfect fragrances for men, will hopefully put more of you guys onto his channel and see if you want to subscribe to him. Let's get started. Welcome to fragrance number three from Atrium Fragrance. Mr. Maritime. My friends, this fragrance needs to be in your summer rotation. It is an absolute banger and it's very unique from other summer fragrances that I've smelled. Now what really turns me on about this fragrance is that the top notes are very pronounced. They play a huge role in this fragrance. That mango, boy, it's a big player along with the bergamot and the C notes makes it completely unique. Overall though, guys, this is a great summer fragrance. Think something like Wolf of Wall Street on vacation. I will show you 12 perfect 10 men's fragrances. These are all fragrances I've reviewed and given a perfect rebel. These are all epic men's fragrances that I love using and they will make any man smell amazing. Did anyone just notice that really intense butt shot on the Limau bottle there? That was a lot to take in. Let's do this. I would love to know which fragrances you feel are perfect 10, so please put them in the comments. To me, I always say a perfect fragrance should meet certain criteria. To get a 10 out of 10 score, the scent profile has to have fantastic quality ingredients and a fantastic smooth blend. Performance for me needs to be at least eight hours. Wearability needs to be at least three seasons, and then I feel like the price tag should be excellent value or a fair price. So first up is a fragrance I, I mean, the very first time I put my nose to it, I got completely addicted. This is an addictive fragrance. It's got a fantastic dose of vanilla with a bit of spiciness on top, a bit of lavender, and everything is powdery, but to my nose, it's not overly powdery. It's warm, it's a bit spicy, it's got that vanilla, and it's intoxicating. This is Jean Paul Gaultier Le Mal Le Parfum. Le Mal Le Parfum is a fantastic flanker. With most designer houses, they do redundant flankers. Le Parfum is a success. They really innovated and modernized the original Le Mal with Le Parfum. It's very long lasting. As he says, it's a warm cardamom vanilla fragrance and then they, that powderiness comes from the bit of iris that's in Le Parfum. It's very long lasting, very romantic, mature and a more modern version of the original Le Mal. A fantastic release. I think his rating of 10 out of 10 for this is fair. I would also agree with this and give us a 10 out of 10. So my next perfect 10, at least according to me, is the perfect mix of freshness and sweetness. That combination, when done right, is extremely attractive to a lot of people. So this is Chanel Alluron Sport O Extreme. So it opens up with like an aromatic, minty and sort of a citrusy opening. So it's bright and fresh, but at least according to me, in a really smooth and very, very attractive way. So the opening is fantastic. I completely agree with this rating. Again, Allure O Extreme has its own style. To me, it's not my exact style perfectly, but I would still give it a 10 out of 10 because it still meets that criteria as well, in my opinion. As you said, fresh aromatic mandarin and mint up top, and then it dries down to this creamy, musky tonka that is iconic to this fragrance. There's no other fragrance really on the market that smells like this uh, in the designer realm anyway. And I just think it is a fantastic signature. As I said in a previous video, this is a perfect autumn time fragrance, a perfect fall fragrance, Allure O Extreme. So my journey with the next perfect and really started with this one right here. This is the EDT of Club de Nuit Intense Man. This one is behind so many and I really mean it. It's crazy how many compliments I received with this one. Then I went on to the EDP, this one right here. And then when I finally got the limited edition, my sort of a journey with this scent ended right here. This to me, I'm gonna link to my comparison between these. I absolutely love all of them. This is really something citrusy with something musky, with something woody, and there's a fruity aspect to it as well. Now so if you guys don't know, the Club and Wee Intense Man line are all clones of Creed Aventus. So it's a smoky, woody pineapple fragrance. I can't talk about the limited edition uh, Pure Parfum that he showed. Apparently it's fantastic. A lot of people say it's really the best version. I can't talk about the Eau de Parfum. I would give that a nine out of 10. I think it's a fantastic clone, long lasting. As you said, a great compliment getter, but the only issue is it does smell a little bit synthetic, not as good quality in terms of ingredients when you smell it up close, but 
in the air, it smells very similar to Aventus. So I bought the next one when it was released and to me it's a scent that I, I really got addicted straight away. It's super addictive. It's extremely powerful. It's definitely an attention grabbing scent. This is Dior Sauvage Elixir. So the original Sauvage when it came out really was something new and unique. But I feel Sauvage Elixir is even more so of an original kind of scent. I mean... Okay, um, I'm not sure I feel, I'm feeling it when reviewers take too long sniffing fragrances. <laughs> I don't know, the, this, it feels a bit forced. I don't like it. I personally don't do it that often in, in my videos, but hey. Anyways, let's talk about Sauvage Elixir. I would give it an 8 out of 10 personally. I do think Rotten Rebel is correct. I agree that it is a more unique fragrance, even more unique than original Sauvage. Sauvage, as you said, yes, it actually was original for its time when it was released in 2015. But now, obviously, it's kind of been, you know, done, overdone now at this point. So Vaj Elixir is more unique. I do like it. I like the idea and the creativity that went with it. But I'm giving it two points deducted because I find this, the blend is a bit headache-inducing, personally. And I was wearing it in the middle of winter time. And I think the wearability is limited, again, because of that headache-inducing effect of the fragrance. And the fact that it's very limited to very cold weather, in my opinion, in the optimal time to wear it. It's very much limited there. What do you think of Sauvage Elixir? I can see why people love it, but I'm personally on the fence about it. I'm more of an eight out of 10 kind of guy for it. The next perfect time is a fragrance that's fit for a king. And that's you, yes you. Wood for greatness. It's an epic room filler. And when it fills a room and someone gets a whiff of it, you will get their attention. And most of the times they absolutely love it. I completely agree, Rotten Rebel. It is fit for a king. Oud for Greatness is an intense fragrance that you have to be able to pull off. It's very appropriate that it had a, a listing in here next to Sauvage Elixir. I think the kind of person who likes Sauvage Elixir will love Oud for Greatness as well. They're both very intense, woody, spicy fragrances with a mature edge, very bold character in both of them. Oud for Greatness, I think, has better wearability. It's not going to be for everyone. Again, it's a more mature, oud, woody, spicy scent. That has great performance. I think it is a fair asking price for this fragrance. I would give this fragrance a 9 out of 10, and I would definitely say everyone should sample it first. So next up is a fragrance my subscribers know that I call the one above all. And if you didn't know that, then it's really time for you to hit that subscribe. Come on, do it right now. Subscribe and like. Thank you, I really do appreciate it. Yeah, as I said guys, if you haven't seen his channel, go consider subscribing to him if you like his videos. So the one above all, is Dior Homme Intense. This is powdery, so if you're not into powdery scents, then just stay away and that's okay. But this one to me is one of the best, if not the best, powdery scent a man can buy. Dior Homme Intense is an artistic take on an evening fragrance. Powdery iris mixed with a cardamom note that's warm, added with cacao in here. Very artistic fragrance. The Dior Homme line, the original fragrances anyways, were very beautiful and really bold and creative sense originally. Dior Homme Intense really is the perfect fragrance for guys who love Iris. If you want to experience Iris, I would say Dior Homme Original for the daytime, Dior Homme Intense for the night. I don't reach for this one that often, but I think a 10 out of 10 score is fair. So if you are a subscriber, then you know that fresh done right is sexy as hell. And my next perfect 10 is very much fresh done right. This is Parfums de Marlis Percival. So from time to time, I get a Oh my God. So from time to time, I get a comment or saying like, okay, this is, this is simple. This is generic and this is boring. This is like Axe shower gel or something like that. I wouldn't go as far as to say Percival is Axe shower gel. I think that's way too harsh. But of course, if you don't know, it is apart from the Marley's recreation of the Abercrombie and Fitch Fierce DNA. So it's a very clean, citrus, lavender, and broxen DNA. That does make you smell like you're fresh out of the shower. It's very bright, definitely more suited for the warm weather. I think it's a great youthful option for purchasers in the brand of Power From The Marley. One of my most complimented fragrances of all time. I give it a nine out of 10. I love the quality of it, longevity, and just how easy it is to love. But I will say that, you know, it's not the most creative blend. It is very similar to the Mont Blanc Legend, Abercrombie and Fitch Fierce, line of DNAs. So my next perfect turn is very much the best 
boozy sweet scent in the world and it's incredibly well made but also insanely addictive. So I'm warning you right here, right now, do not, and I repeat, do not try it out unless you're prepared to become an addict. This is Killian Angel's share, and this is, this is, I just gotta spray it on. Whilst he's doing that, I will say yes, it is a 10 out of 10. I don't know like gourmand fragrances in general, but I think this is one of the best gourmands ever created. It's got a very nice balance of both boozy notes with cardamom and praline, which makes it smell edible gourmand. A really elegant and fantastic evening fragrance. When you go to Killian, you want fragrances that are exquisite, that really smell like they're designed for a special occasion. You can spend the money on this fragrance. I think it's absolutely worth it. You can go sample it if you want, but it's got a very much a lot of hype in the community for a reason. I think the hype is worth it. A fantastic, fantastic evening fragrance, fantastic scent for special occasions. Wear it all year round as well, outside of the summertime. So it meets all my criteria, it's a 10. So Tom Ford Ombre Leather has always been at the very top, at least for me, when it comes to leather fragrances, and I have a ton of leather fragrances. So I think Tom Ford pretty much nailed it with the leather in this one, and I absolutely love how it's combined with a bit of spiciness, a touch of jasmine. Ombre Leather, is a great beginner's level of fragrance, is how I classify it. I give this a nine out of 10. I think it's a fantastic signature you can wear, actually, if you like leather, you have to be able to pull this off. It is a little bit bold, a little bit different. So it's kind of like the kind of people who started off their collection and now want to go into more expensive fragrances and want to explore different styles. You go to Ombre Leather, the original. I get great longevity, great wearability for different seasons. And I think it's the ingredients that smell great, but for me, the blend is still not as creative as a leather fragrance can be. It is straightforward, so that's why I don't give it a perfect 10 out of 10 score, but it is still a fantastic fragrance that I still reach for relatively often. So I'll give it a nine out of 10. So there are a ton of fantastic tobacco scents out there, and I have a lot of them, but Montabaco Intensivo, from Armand Jane has something in it that makes it truly unique and makes it stand out from the crowd. So Montabaco Intensivo. Oh. I don't think it's fair just saying this is a tobacco fragrance. I actually think this is one of the best fragrances ever created of all time. I was shocked by how good this fragrance was. I tried a sample of it recently in a video where I gave it a 10 out of 10 there. So I completely agree with Rotten Rebel. This is a fragrance that is so creative and so beautifully blended. When you try to do any perfumery yourself, you know I dabble in it myself and uh, I'm an amateur, but you get to appreciate how difficult perfumery is and just how complex this fragrance is that you can't really actually pick out any individual note that prominently. Just shows how creative that, that so many different notes have been created and curated together in a really clever way. There's a lot of different characters here. There's the tobacco, the suede, the green tea note that gives it a relaxing effect. There's the aromatic notes in here. I think it's like a mountain air note they have in here. Citruses. If you look at a note breakdown for a grand scale of this fragrance, it is quite complex. Very beautifully balanced, very unique. You'll never find a fragrance like this. Very long lasting while still being very fresh and light. This is for any more mature oriented individuals, this is the perfect signature in my opinion. This is just a fantastic, fantastic signature that makes it smell fresh, clean, elegant, refined, relaxed, and unique. I really definitely recommend you check this fragrance out. So next up is the Sex Bomb. That's Valentino Uomo Intense. So why the Sex Bomb? Because it's one of the absolute sexiest powdery scents a man can wear. So Valentino Uomo Intense, I would say Valentina Woman Intense is the more gourmand version of Dior Homme Intense. Maybe I'm being unfair, but I really do think so. <laughs> I kind of feel that you don't really need to own both Dior Homme Intense and Valentina Woman Intense. For those of you who've tried or owned both fragrances, what do you think? Am I being fair in that assessment? I would still give this a solid score. Maybe not a 10 out of 10 like Dior Homme Intense, maybe a, an 8 out of 10. So next up is another sexy fragrance and this one is from Initio and this one has Initio sort of a sweet vanilla in it together with a bit of tobacco, a bit of booziness and some spiciness and this is the... Oof. This is the fantastic side effect. This is sexy. It's another banger from Initio and I actually feel this is definitely one of the best from the house, and to me... So I got to try Initio's side effect. 
finally a few months back in their discovery sets. And I found that Initio in general are quite a straightforward, high quality, but simple brand. You know you're gonna get an evening fragrance, you're gonna get something ambery, you're gonna get something that's high quality, but they're not complex fragrances. I found side effect very pleasant. It is a perfectly unisex, boozy rum fragrance with an amber vanilla in there as well. So it's very smooth, high quality, not overly sweet, and I just think it's a very safe evening fragrance if you want something that's niche. You know, it really does smell like its price tag. You really gotta love that style. It's not a style that I go crazy about, so I'm not sure if I would ever buy a full bottle personally, but I think it does what it does correctly. I would give it a nine out of 10, so it's definitely worth checking out. So. so I would love to know which are your perfect rebels? Which fragrances in your collection do you feel are 10 out of 10s? That's a great question. Uh, let's hear it guys. What would you consider a perfect 10 out of 10 in your collection? Let us know in the comments down below. What are your thoughts on Rotten Rebels list? Do you agree or disagree? For the most part, you can tell from my reaction, I actually really agree with his taste. I think he has fantastic taste. Rotten Rebel, this video was made six months ago. I'm hoping you no longer do that whole over spraying yourself on camera and you know taking it such a long time to sniff the bottle please stop doing that <laughs> but uh just some some honest feedback but I'm, I'm not sure this is six months ago so this video you know things obviously will change in six months but this is a fantastic video a really fantastic channel i do think you should go check out Rotten rebels channel he has fantastic taste in fragrances if you enjoyed this video guys make sure to check out our other videos where i react to other youtube channels and i'll see you guys in the next one bye now